This is unseen. Nobody's ever seen this. I don't ever show it. It's kind of a set of rules for, for what I design or how I cut. I'll read it. Static man versus man in motion, a study into movement and gesture. Number one, the static man is cut with stillness. He is governed by structure. Number two, the man in motion is conceived with a greater journey in mind. He is liberated. Three, these garments should feel like air. Four, a metamorphosis between the hard and structured, the soft and the elegant. Five, sportswear subversion. Function meets the unnecessary. <laughs> Can you pin those together for me? Thank you. We're at Somerset House Studios, um, which is a kind of studio space with multidisciplinary artists. So I'm a fashion designer and a choreographer, um, but you have filmmakers here, you have set designers, you have photographers, you have other fashion designers. So it's a bit of a community. That doesn't look good, me destroying my pattern. When I started the brand, I always said it was about liberating people through movement. So I think for me, dance, it, in its kind of poetic nature, it kind of enabled me to express myself. I think when I kind of placed the work with an active wear, it, everything completely made sense for me. Um, it, like it gave me a real purpose to what I'm doing. So this hair is like our kind of archive. So we're, we're, when we need to kind of think about finishes or how things should be complete, we have like a lot of garments that we reference or we look at. This is like one of my favorite pieces. We're in reference to my brother's time. And yeah, it reminds me of like me begging my mum to get me an Averex. But then I also realized that she got me a fake one. So it's quite funny. Like this is like one of my favorite pieces in, in the archive. Was this the fake one or was this the... No, no, this is the real, this is the real one, but... <laughs> I've got your trousers, Mela. I'm manifesting. Within sportswear, there's also a lot of loaded kind of stereotypes. And when I first started my brand, I wanted to challenge the preconceived ideas around what sportswear means. Like, can sportswear be a smart object? Does it always have to be seen to be worn on a certain demographic of people? And I think what was always key for me is to kind of elevate the idea of it. I didn't know you were Bayesian too. Yeah, well, my mum's born there. She's fully Guyanese, but she's born in Barbados. So. We have to give love to Barbados as well. So that, that's my grandparents' flags and then my mum's flag. Um, it's kind of an anchoring, reminds me of who I am in the studio. And then that even goes into kind of AW22 and the kind of Caribbean heritage because growing up, you have your London idea of what it is to be Caribbean. And, you know, I grew up wearing sportswear. So what was really interesting is how you marry the two cultures together. So, for example, that jacquard there, it's like my grandparents' flag waved on a projector to kind of resemble the culture of when you go to the carnival and you wave your flag. Um, but then it, it kind of comes off looking like a landscape and, and that's what was really exciting about it. So that's the print of it. I think finding a personal connection to things, it, it makes me feel more confident to want other people to wear them. Like that whole collection is my wardrobe now. And I think even um, like doing sportswear wool was quite a risk. It, it's also exciting because I don't think I've fully um, explored the potentiality of it. So what's really, really fun, particularly in the new season, we, we've looked at different ways to use wool. Not every man wants to wear a suit. So I think what's exciting is being able to show people new perspectives or allowing them to access a new point of view. I think I'm always open to taking risks because you only live once, so you might as well just try, try things and see, see what happens. All right, I'll leave because I've just had enough. Bye. <laughs>